Hi, I am Ashley, an application chemist in Shimatsu. Molecular weight is an important information of compounds, especially so for macromolecules, where the molecular weight could range from thousands to hundreds of thousand daltons. When working with polymers, being able to determine the molecular weight plays an important role in determining the property of these polymers. This video will demonstrate how the molecular weight of polymers can be determined using the Shimatsu gel permeation chromatography systems. In this video, we are going to show you how to determine the molecular weight of polymers using the Shimatsu gel permeation chromatography systems. Gel permeation chromatography, which is more commonly known as size exclusion chromatography, is a chromatographic method that separates molecules based on their effective size relative to the pore diameter and volume of the porous stationary phase of the column. The separation is independent of the chemical or electronic nature of the molecules and their mobile phase carrier. There are two types of size exclusion chromatography. One is gel permeation chromatography, which is usually used in the industrial field. It makes use of a cross-linked polystyrene polymer packing material and a non-aqueous mobile phase to separate and measure the molecular weight distribution of solvent-soluble samples such as synthetic polymers. The standard used for calibration is polystyrene. The other is gel filtration chromatography, which is used in the biochemical field. It makes use of a hydrophilic column packing material and an aqueous mobile phase to separate and measure the molecular weight distribution of large water-soluble molecules such as polysaccharides and proteins. The standard used for calibration is polyulin. The columns used in GPC are filled with material that contain many pores, and the entry of analytes into these pores is determined by their size. As seen in the animation, when dissolved molecules are introduced into the column, the smaller molecules are able to penetrate deep into the pores, hence spending more time moving through the column, whereas some larger molecules are not able to enter the pores at all. Thus, the path taken by the smaller molecules to flow through the column is much longer as compared to the larger molecules. This results in the larger molecules eluding out of the column faster than the smaller ones, hence effectively sorting the molecules by size. For a packing with a given mean pore diameter, molecules that are larger than a particular size, which is known as the exclusion limit, are not able to enter the pores of a column and will elute out together with the solvent. The elution volume of these analytes will be the same as the void volume of the column. On the other hand, molecules that are smaller than the permeation limit are able to penetrate into the smallest of confinements within the pores and will completely elute together regardless of their molecular weight. The three commonly used averages in GPC are shown here. Across the three averages, the number average is the smallest in value followed by the weight average and the z-average. The dispersity, or the ratio of the weight average to the number average, is a value of interest when conducting a GPC analysis as it indicates the extent of distribution of the molecular weights of the polymer. There are two essential hardware components of GPC that will be introduced in this video. The first is the column. GPC columns are typically packed with porous particles made up of polystyrene polymers of various diameters and pore sizes. These are determined by the different degrees of polymer cross-linking. The variety of columns available have exclusion limits ranging from 1500 to 200 million. This provides more options to select a column that is optimized for separation at the target's molecular weight. The second component of GPC is the detector. One of the most commonly used detectors is the refractive index detector, or RID for short, and it is used to detect the analytes when they elute out of the GPC column. The RID contains a flow cell that is made up of the sample and reference side, both of which contain the mobile phase. A light beam from the lamp inside the RID will pass through both sides of the flow cell before being reflected on a mirror, creating an image on the photodiode. As the solutes elude out from the column and into the sample cell of the detector, the composition of the mobile phase in the sample cell changes which causes the light beam to refract due to the difference in refractive index. This results in a horizontal shift in the image produced on the photodiode, the distance of which is proportional to the difference in refractive index between the sample and reference cell. 
The Lab Solutions software is used to run the analysis. After the analysis is done, the data obtained is then processed by the GPC post-run tool that is found inside Lab Solutions. Now let us move on to the Lab Solutions workstation, starting from how to conduct a real-time analysis. First, we need to open the real-time analysis window, and then create a new method file for GPC analysis. This method file will be used to analyze the GPC standards. Under the Instrument Parameters view, set the parameters of each component one by one to create a GPC method file. Save the method file and then download the parameters. After we create a method file, a batch table is set up to allow for the analysis of multiple standards, including all the different molecular weight polymer standards. Input all the relevant information such as the sample name and sample ID for easy identification of each standard. After saving the batch file created, start the real-time batch run. After the real-time batch run is completed, we can start creating the calibration curve. In the post-run window, select the GPC post-run icon and open it. Open the GPC calibration curve tool from the assistant bar and select the method file used in the real-time analysis. In the data file list under the data menu, add the raw data files of the standards. The retention time data of the target compound peak of each standard is selectively picked up and added in the edit mode of the calibration table. With the retention time inputted into the calibration table, fill in the molecular weights of each standard accordingly. The other columns of the table can be left at the default values. Once you're finished editing the calibration table, save the calibration table view parameters and start the setup of the calibration curve. Open the data processing parameters to set the parameters under the integration, GPC calculation, and GPC calibration curve tabs to generate the calibration curve. Lastly, save the method file containing the calibration curve. Having obtained the calibration curve, we can now find out the molecular weight distribution of unknown samples. Open the GPC data analysis tool from the assistant bar and then load the method file containing the calibration curve. The molecular weight distribution table can then be opened from the view menu. Under the peak table tab, the molecular weight value at the peak top can be found in the bottom table and this indicates the molecular weight of highest abundance. Under the Average Molecular Weight tab, the Number Average, Weight Average as well as the Dispersity value can be found. The closer the Dispersity value is to 1, the narrower the molecular weight distribution. This brings us to the end of the video on how to determine the molecular weight of polymers using the Shimadzu Gel Permeation Chromatography Systems. In the next video, we will be looking at how the GPC report can be used to display the results that we have obtained. Thank you for watching. Excellence in science. Shimazu.